you know, every year we try and get some at least one big challenge in. Um, so just to run through a few of them, we did, as I said, we scaled the glacier in Iceland. I completed the fan dance in Wales, which is a 24 kilometer trek up and down the penny fan twice. Uh, we did the winter edition. There's the summer and the winter edition. And I, I knew I'd only do that particular challenge once. So I decided that I would do the harder one because, well, for starters, I prefer the cold. So I actually think even though the summer edition is, is technically easier, I think I would have found it more difficult because climbing up and down a mountain on crutches, especially something like the penny fan in heat, you know, where, where you've got the, the sun beating down your back. I think that would be just disgusting. <laughs> I'd much prefer snow and cold weather. Um, so that was incredible. That just was for our American viewers out there who may not know what the fan dance is. Up until a few years ago, the fan dance was the last of the physical endurance tests for the UK special forces that they went and did yeah. before they went on to their sort of trade specific using guns and shooting shit um, uh, <laughs> training. And uh, so it's the last. I think phase. that's what they officially, that's the official name for it. Guns and shooting shit training. Guns and shooting shit training. I could be in the military. Um, never. Uh, but yeah, the fan dance is the last physical endurance test for the special forces here in the UK. So you've done that on crutches. I did that on crutches. Um, I actually had to ask for permission because what I loved about that challenge is that it's organized by ex-military personnel. So it's run to a T. I mean, if I was to show you the email correspondence that I'd received from them in the lead up to it, I would be, oh my God, I can't even, I wouldn't even be able to count the amount of emails that came in. And within each email, there was a list about a mile long of things that we were told we had to have done in the lead up, we had to have on the day. So one of the things is you have to carry a backpack and it can't just, it, it's weighted and it is weighed before you start. And if it's underweight, you won't be allowed to do it. There's so many reasons that will stop you from getting to the start line um, because of their rules. Um, so you have to have things in the backpack that you will actually be able to use if you become stranded on the mountain, because that's what they would have done in the special forces. So I loved that side of it. I loved that you were following in their footsteps um, quite literally because you were going on the same route that they did. Um, and, and the people that do it, you know, a lot of them themselves are in the military and they're maybe doing it as a charity fundraiser for fallen men and women. And there's just so much emotion attached to that particular challenge. Um, but also they take no shit. Absolutely none. If you're not, if you don't turn up wearing the right boots or the right rain gear, you're what you're turned away. And it doesn't matter where you've traveled from. And um, there's people that travel from like I myself traveled from a different country to get there. If I wasn't wearing the right gear, I would be turned away because in every one of those emails, you're reminded constantly what you need to bring. So their opinion is if you have got to the start line without looking at at least one of those emails, then you don't deserve to be here. And I just think that that is amazing that they're so strict because it, it makes it all the more of a challenge to do and also the more of an accomplishment when you get to the finish line. Mm. Um, so no, that was, that was probably my favorite challenge to date. Um, it was absolutely incredible, but it was also one of the toughest. Um, the, one of the routes or one of the, the areas of um, the route is called Jacob's Ladder. And I will never, ever forget trying to walk up that in driving hail and snow Oh my God, it was just, there's actually video footage of me and it looks like the video has been slowed down, but I, I actually am just walking that slow. I physically couldn't <laughs> walk any slower. And yet what I love about the video that I'm, I'm referring to is that there's a guy behind me. He looks physically fit. He actually looked like he was in the army and I didn't realize he was, I didn't see what was happening until I looked at the video footage afterwards. But as I'm struggling along with my crutches and my backpack, he actually stops behind me either to throw up or to lean over. You can see him leaning over because he physically couldn't go on. And the fact that a girl on crutches overtook him, I just love that video so much. <laughs> but it, it, it really was incredible. Um, but anyway, that, I could talk about that all day, but that was one of the challenges. Um, the Four Peaks was one I did in 2018. So I actually became the first crutch user in Ireland to do a Four Peak challenge on crutches. Um, so we started with the biggest obviously start with the biggest, started with the biggest mountain in Ireland, which is Karen Tuhill in Kerry. And we then went on and did three others in three different counties. So the part of the challenge was actually getting to each county, getting the challenge, getting the mountain done. 
back in our mode of transport onto the next one. So there was no rest. So for 32 hours, we just went, went, went until we got to the final mountain, which was here in Donegal. So I slept for, I think, a full day after that one. Um, but again, it was incredible. You know, some of the people, the media kind of picked up on that one, I suppose, um, here in Ireland. And everywhere we went, there were people waiting to speak to us and share their stories. So for that reason alone, that one was probably the most emotional challenge I've done. Um, well, I know the fan dance was emotional in itself, but just to meet other people and hear their stories. One of the, the mountains we did, I met my first Ewing's patient that had come out the other side and had actually lost his leg as a result, but was still fighting fit. Um, and had he'd heard about our story on the local news or whatever and had come out to meet us. And he'd never actually, as, as much as he lived near the mountain we were going to be, he'd never actually attempted to hike any of it because he was an amputee. And I think he worried about just quite a lot of loose ground. And he worried, I suppose, like anybody would about falling. So the two of us walked part of it together. So for me to see him do that was absolutely incredible. And for him to achieve that himself was unbelievable. And just, you know, those kind of things, you don't expect that to happen when you take on that type of a challenge. You just you kind of just selfishly think of yourself and think, right, I have to get through this. I have to do this, that, and the other. But what you don't expect is to meet people like him that have been through far more than I have, like to have lost his leg from, I think he'd actually lost it from, I think he'd lost his full leg, so from the hip. Um, and to be going around for the past maybe 10 or 20 years as an amputee, you know, and for him to still be able to, to do these things, to get to to at least even the car park of that mountain, never mind start hiking up it. It was just incredible. Um, and it's people like him that make all these challenges so worthwhile that, you know, it, it makes you want to just plan the next one as soon as possible. That's incredible.